Oui. Ok. Well, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. This is a type of news. And good morning, because he keeps forgetting to say good morning, because you know people actually watch it That's when they true. eat breakfast and the cereal. So I'm sorry, sir. I'm gonna slap you next time you don't say good morning. Every time this guy, he comments on Easter, we'll say sorry. We know you watch in the morning. It's more than one. It's a few. It's at least three. It's a few. But. Maybe Today four? we have a full round table session here. It's a, it's the table's a rectangle. Well, I never did well in trigonometry, okay? Uh, anyway, anybody that's seen just trigonometry, just trigonometry, 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 that, that's trigonometry, triangles. <laughs> anyway, so see, yeah, we don't need the application for new co-host. He's gonna replace Dwayne. <laughs> no, no, you be the one replace. Okay, I, I bring a lot to the table. I bring more. I bring the table, the rectangular <laughs> table. <laughs> How about that? We would love if you would introduce yourself to our viewers. And you know, just just project because our camera is. Oh. It's it's fine. Yeah, I know. It, it's really fine. He doesn't know anything about video edits, and I do it all. You can whisper, we'll get it. You can use my sound. Okay. See, we, just, there you go. I have complete faith in your ability. It, it's nice to know someone <laughs> does. Well, thank you for inviting us, and it's it's really great to be here. I think you've done some fantastic um, interviews before. We've we've seen them, and we just. Think you're doing a great job, so really great to be here, thank you. Um, I'm Ali Bargett, uh, the Chair of the Road Safety Council, and um, passionate about road safety in Bermuda um, for very personal reasons, uh, but I think every person in Bermuda can say that. I don't think there are many people that aren't affected by this. I think, I think everybody's known at least one, probably more. You know what I mean, and as we said in our in our last in our game violence video, if you don't know somebody, then I guarantee you, you know at least ten people that knew them. Yeah, and before we dig completely in, let's just let the rest of the round table introduce themselves so that everyone knows who these lovely young men are. Okay, um, Antoine Richards. Um, I recently started a new business, um, which is called Bermuda Motorcycling Academy. We're basically providing um, high-quality riding training. Um, my background is in uh, just a lot of bikes, riding bikes. I used to race uh, professionally out in the U.S. at one point in time. I've been active in the racing scene here. I do a lot of coaching, so um, riding training has been something that I've been very passionate about. And um, having met with Ali um, through the Road Safety Council, um, we kind of just saw that we had a lot of um, commonality when it came to our passion for road safety and um, trying to find a way to move things forward. And Ali was on hope for that. So um, since then, We've been working closely, and we've making a lot of difference. I think we're starting to um, get some real um, traction right now, um, and part of that is due to this gentleman over here. He's gonna take the next introduction. <laughs> uh, no, we're giving too much credit. But my name is uh, Agam Jen, and uh, I have been uh, the producer of the documentary called A Piece of the Rock, which was. Uh, targeted towards improving road safety in Bermuda and uh, we came up with uh, a three-point solution that we presented in our documentary apart from sharing really compelling stories of different individuals who have either lost someone close to them or who have been taking care of someone uh, for many many years or people themselves who have either lost their limb or lost their ability to do certain things and never been able to reach their potential. So uh, I met Ali, right when we had come up with this idea, we were introduced by Dr. Joseph Francioni, who is uh, Bermuda's leading authority on uh, road safety. He was the former Bermuda Road Safety Council chairman. And uh, right from the get-go, uh, Ali was so passionate about it that, that, that we just hit the right notes. And since then, uh, we started, we were together on the Road Safety Community Action Group, which Ali started chairing uh, and that was an independent community action group which was trying to promote certain things about road safety. Uh, three things that we were passionate about were graduated licensing program, uh, random roadside sobriety testing and stricter enforcement of speed uh, on the roads of Bermuda. And then Ali went on to become uh, the new chair of the Bermuda Road Safety Council. He managed to finish our film and Earlier this year, we managed to do public screenings 
uh, free of charge for everyone in Bermuda. Uh, there were about nine screenings uh, in during April and May, <coughs> followed by screenings at every single school uh, in Bermuda and churches and uh, council meetings where we've been screening the film. This film was until recently was being shown on CITV three times a day, every single day, uh, and. Uh, we are just hoping that whatever we have done so far, and we're going to continue doing that, you can see the camera <laughs> in the background, uh, it will speak for itself and, you know, together with Antoine and his partner John, uh, teaching, uh, providing better training on the roads, we're just hoping that it would translate into better uh, statistics, basically, at the end of the day, each one of us ends up becoming a statistic. And, uh, and that is, the, sadly, that is the only way to be able to practically measure uh, what, what the condition on our roads is, which is right now appalling, and the, we are the world leaders in road crashes. Really? And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By far. World yeah. leaders? By far. I mean, I knew it was the highest cause of fatality, but world leaders? Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. Well, wow. per hundred thousand people, if you start looking at that way, then mm -hmm. we are the world leaders. We're the world leaders in diabetes. We're the world leaders in bread fatalities. We're the blood of mercy. <laughs> which which happens with we'll a small back to England. Yeah, which happens with a small population. Suddenly so you see see these uh, kings in data if you look at it that way. But but diabetes and different things could have happened in different years, you know? You, mm -hmm. you are a world leader in HIV, that doesn't mean that everyone has HIV oh, at some oh, point, oh, right? Oh, oh, right? So, uh, but we have consistently been the world leaders in road crashes and road fatalities for decades, yeah. which means that this is a problem. This is a deep problem. Can I just add there as well, uh, to reinforce Agam's point, his other hat is as an actuary. So st statistics, um, numbers, um, he was an invaluable part of the team. Uh, the community action group was actually the third pillar of the Bermuda Police Service uh, road strategy. And uh, Inspector Cardwell was part of that group, he was leading that group in, in charge of uh, roads policing for Bermuda. So we, we had a, a small core team, some people from Inspector Cardwell's team, Dr. Francioni has, has been involved in road safety for decades. He sent um, a magazine clipping to me from Bermuda Police Service from 1995 and told me to look at the article that he was featured in where he was talking about graduated licensing and sobriety testing and speed cameras, exactly the conversations that we are having today 1995. Oh, before you was born, wasn't it? Yeah, I, but I had to flick through the magazine a couple of times. And then, then I looked at the second email from him that said, did you recognize me? And there is a very young Dr. Francioni with the Italian black hair. And <laughs> there he was. But his words have not changed. And he moved on. Um, from road safety, but still is very passionate about it. So he's acted as really a, a, a consultant, a mentor, a guidance um, in in very deep ways with with the core team. Um, we are responsible for dragging me back in. Yeah. I think he had, he had kind of given up hope that nothing is going to change, but then we, we, we dragged him back in. New blood has that effect, right? Well, well that's the that's the point of it. But so being that this is such an old, deep rooted problem well, how do we what, 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 what do we what do we do about it because I mean I think everybody like just on your way to work you're gonna get unnecessarily overtook by somebody right we, we thought about a lot of different aspects you know when we were making a film we were trying to see what can we present in 60 minutes because or 70 minutes which is not long enough as he nope. said before we could speak about this for an entire week weekend whatever, but 60, 70 minutes is not long enough to present all the different sub-stories, sub-plots, you can say, you know, which could be root causes. And there are a lot of them, one of them is definitely uh, 
alcohol and drug involvement. So mm-hmm. 75%, more than 75% of road fatalities have alcohol or some kind of drug drugs yeah. involved in it's, Bermuda. It's not just people riding stupid normally, it's just no. it's people ride stupid normally. People ride That's stupid well. normally and then you combine it with alcohol and that that will become, ends up becoming fatal or life changing in the sense you'll ca- get head injuries, you'll get your limbs uh, amputated and, or, or something along those lines. And alcohol is a serious part, one of uh, another part is not properly being trained on the roads which Antoine is trying to address. Uh, but that's why we came up with this threefold thing that why we did not want to go into why is drinking a problem? I don't think it is. It, it probably it's not because we that's not what we try to say that we are not saying don't go out and drink, stop having fun. But the problem, cultural problem is it is okay when we go out in a group that nobody is stopping the other person from drinking and getting back on their bike. Or probably all of us are doing it at the same time. We all mm-hmm. all had five drinks over the course of last three hours and we will be okay, we will wish each other well, a good night and then we will get on our bikes and go home. Could and nobody is going to stop that. So hmm. uh, and, when we and, started... And the, the, difference, the difference in other jurisdictions I see with my own children who are now grown up, older, some living in the UK, some in Switzerland. And they wouldn't dream of, and, and Canada in university, the penalties are so harsh uh, and there's such a stigma attached to drinking and driving that they wouldn't dream of going out, getting drunk and not having a designated driver or a taxi booked, or somebody picking them up. Yeah. We have a very, we, we have a very slap on the wrist society. We're very far behind like, in that thinking. Yeah. Give us your money. Okay, we'll take a couple points off your license, then go go back right. out. Or e- <coughs> even even if they try to take your license, if you give them a good enough excuse, they'll let you keep it. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing mm-hmm. is, I get, I know a lot of folks who are watching are going to be wondering how exactly will the road safety council get behind forcing mm-hmm. Bermuda into like the modern world as far as with road restrictions and road safety right. actions yeah. and penalties in it. Well, if I just give you a very quick summary of the work we've done to date. Um, obviously, you know, we've, we've just had an election, we have a new government, so we have a new Minister of Transport. And our new government, in their... Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I think he's probably very busy at the moment. Oh, they're all busy. But, you know. um, you know, but we've seen, you know, he did uh, put a, a note out on road safety uh, during cup match and, you know, we, we have the, the, in the PLP platform for road safety. Um, I've always maintained that for, for my part, this should not be political. This yeah. is a community issue. It affects every one of it's us. It's a no-brainer. So, and, and every politician that I've spoken with believes that we have to change. So I don't think anybody doesn't want to do anything about it. It's just a question of implementing the measures yeah. to make the changes. And, and to do that in other jurisdictions where graduated licensing has been implemented, they have seen a drastic reduction within two years of road fatalities and injuries of young people. The 16, 17, 18 year olds are most at risk of being severely injured. What about, so, oh, sorry. sorry, no, the, um, I was just going to say that the first part is, you know, that they would like to enhance uh, the government, and I'm reading verbatim here, enhance the government's collaborative partnership with the Road Safety Council and local insurers to improve the quality of the project ride program. We were looking at maybe, do we need to have new legislation in place for graduated licensing? Maybe we don't, maybe we just need to uh, improve the driving test and the driving test standards. Antoine's um, training is bringing in on-road training for the first time in Bermuda. You go through project ride, you ride around cones in the car park, you have no experience on the road unless your parent or your brother or whoever, uncle, auntie, takes you out on a bike. They themselves haven't had proper training. So it's self-perpetuating. You then go out and you copy what you see, so now with the training from the BMOTO Academy, um, what we're hoping is that it will become mandatory. It will be a requirement. 
And then we won't have the issue of, oh, well, I don't really feel like doing that. Oh, I know, I know how to ride. You know, um, well, what if they, um, um, because when I got my car license, mm -hmm. when I was working at, um, I used to work cable vision, when I did that, they said, you need to get your license for these vehicles, and if you don't, you're fired. So I, went, I took my license test in one of the big cable vision trucks, and he, the driver was sitting in the truck with me as we drove around. So what if, because to get your bike license, like you just said, you do it, the hardest thing is to do the eight around the curve yeah. without putting your foot down. That's it. But that's what they're doing. They're, yeah. They are literally taking someone along on a separate bike right. and speaking to them directly on the road. Yeah. That, that, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, that so, needs to yeah. be like widespread. So, so yeah, this is, what we, this is what we're doing now. Um, we have partnered with Argus and the uh, Berkeley Institute. Okay. Um, Argus has um, taken on the cost for putting 50 students through a 10 hour program with B Moto, um, where we put them through the equivalent of what they will almost go through in the UK except that the order is a little bit rearranged. Mm. Um, because at current, um, there is no one word portion to the writing exam. There's no precedent for a, for a someone under, who doesn't have a license to do any sort of training, any sort of examination, any sort of assessment on the road. So unfortunately at this stage we can't do that yet. So what we're saying is, you know, we take students, they go through their, their regular, regular project ride, they get the Bermuda Youth License, and then as soon as they come out of TCD, we will not be the first persons there where they go up and they go out and drive from TCD with us and get their first bit of road experience with someone like myself or, you know, hopefully that we can bring more into this training, this nets and training industry and allow people to, you know, pick and choose and say, okay, well, this is the person I feel comfortable with. After I finish TCD, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to ride two hours with this person at least and start to get um, a bit of one road guidance. And what we do, the way that that can be done safely is, first of all, you need to have a, a trainer who's someone who's been you know, really, really knows what they're doing um, because it's a huge responsibility. There is no room for error whatsoever um, on the instructor side, um, especially when you're dealing with people who don't have the experience. So there is, you know, there is a bit of a barrier on the instructor side, but from the students, they should be able to just go out there and um, find someone they can trust and have this person involved, well, but the use will be a radio between the helmet of the instructor and the student. The instructor would have a microphone, and so the communication will go one way. The instructor gives instructions and the student listens. And essentially what you would do is you go out um, and we would be working on what's considered to be defensive riding. So uh, every, you know, uh, the way that I, I look at it is every little bit of, of, of Road experience that I've gathered in the last uh, 16, 15 years, you know, um, with the addition of all the rest of the racing and, and that kind of stuff with it, I try to cram as much as I can into my new students from the outset. So from the very first time, from the very first time they hit the road, they've heard all the little small pieces of advice that you pick up over the years when you're riding. You know, like um, how to easily gauge distance between the vehicle in front of you. You know, when you're first when you first get sixteen, and especially with a lot of the uh, sixteen year olds get these days, you don't you didn't grow up riding pedal bikes around neighborhoods. Nobody rides pedal bikes. Nobody rides pedal bikes, Nobody rides pedal exactly. Only so to this, work out yeah, yeah, exactly. Bikes. So so when I'm trying so it's difficult when you know you're trying to explain to a parent who grew up, you know, in the eighties or seventies or whatever and they grew up riding pedal bikes all the time. You know? so, so for them yeah but so they but for them it's like okay it was a natural sort of progression. Back then, the roads were half as full as they are now. Mm -hmm. Can I and throw that statistic in? Please do. 225 kilometers of paved road with 47,000 vehicles on it. Yes. Is that including bikes or just cars? That's cars, bikes, trucks, everything? taxis, everything. A vehicle. It could, it could be a bad tank. I'm sorry. <laughs> could, just, could uh, either be. way. <laughs> so... <laughs> But but what Antoine's describing is what we, the Road Safety Council, would like to see um, as, a, as a, a legal requirement. Yeah, that's, because that's, if it's optional, no, then mm -hmm. who's... Yeah. And, it, you know, Project Ride has to be done. So... I didn't take Project Ride to get my license. That's, that's a, Did that, that come in after you? I yes yes you, yeah, I it wasn't around then. So. Yeah, it became, became yeah. mandatory in 
Mm. It was optional during our time. Right. Because yeah. I, I, I got my optional. license in 2010 when I, when I came yeah. back from yeah. the States. Yeah. So just, just that thing of, like, you know, when even when it's introduced, at, at that time, giving people an option, it's almost never worked. So what we have been trying to do is, there is there is stuff that police need the police needs to do better like random roadside sobriety testing. There is uh, the graduated licensing, the speed cameras that the government has was mentioned in the 2016 throne speech, but still for public private partnerships, but still no requests for proposals have gone out. Mm. It's been a year and a half, right? So why have has that not happened? So but these are all the enforcement bits, mm -hmm. right? But there is a cultural change that needs to happen around road safety. So, so when things like that, when options are presented, then it almost is giving the culture, the people, us a choice, not, and and not being informed of that choice and what the ramification of that choice can be, mm -hmm. it, they can be quite devastating if people don't understand them. So it's kind of a chicken or the egg situation. Should we change the culture first, or should we? make it so strict that it gets changed. You need a force change. It, I think yeah, it, you can't give them the option. I, I think both of them kind of could go hand, yeah, go hand, hand in hand at the same yeah. time because enforcement can usually have more of a negative effect than yeah, positive. True, true. But one thing I really liked what you said was defensive riding. Like you said, you teach them defensive riding because I hear from so many people, and I've actually even, this is just for some getting out, but I've actually even said this to some people. Like I hear a lot of parents and even young people say, I don't want my friend or my little sister or this person to have a bike, not because I'm afraid of them, because I'm worried about everybody else. Absolutely. And it's not just, I think, I think so much emphasis is put on bikes being dangerous because, you know, mm -hmm. but if you fall off on a bike and you crash in a car, it's completely different. But mm -hmm. being on a bike, it makes it extra dangerous because everybody else doesn't know what they're doing. Like people, people don't use the indicators in Bermuda. People exactly. don't want That's for driving in Bermuda. Like it's no, and it's just like yeah. I almost yeah. got run over the other day because I was riding, and this car just decided to make a right turn, mm -hmm. and if I didn't slam on the brakes, mm -hmm. which is bad for bikes because the back tire spins out, so you gotta put your legs down. So if you don't do that, yeah, it's just like. Yeah, my husband has three screws and a metal plate in his foot because of exactly that that happened right outside your office here three years ago. Oh, jeez. Exactly that. It wasn't you, was it? No, 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 it wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah, you but know, you know what? Everybody in Bermuda has a story. Everybody, everybody you speak with has a story or a whole stream. You could have, like, what's your worst... We even thought about having a Facebook page of what's your worst experience on Bermuda's roads. Oh, we, we, or, we wrote you know, at least 10 videos um, about them. One of, one of my, my colleagues said, what if we have like the Donut of the Day Award, you know? And, and then other people have contacted me and said, can we put um, GoPros in the front of our cars? Yeah. So that we can, you know, put people people outside there. I think that's a really good idea, actually. I like, think it's sorry because of the police violence and everything, but right? people in the US, I see them like putting... Yeah, you see them. Some the cameras on yeah. Yeah, some people have GoPro. I think that, yeah. that should come standard issue. I think trackers should be owned by us. I think that little camera should be on them as well. So if there is an accident or if something happens, yeah. boom. Speaking of that, so exactly, it shouldn't be about penalty because you're absolutely right that penalizing too much act can have a negative effect on society. Mm -hmm. So when we are talking about these implementations, they are going to act as deterrents, not, not penalties. So if people know that there are speed cameras everywhere around, people are going to drive slowly. Mm -hmm. If people know that every Friday night, Saturday night, I'm going to be checked randomly for whether I'm, I've been drinking or not, they are less likely to either drink or they're going to arrange for a taxi or mm -hmm. some other way of coming. And that's what happens in the UK when yes. people mm -hmm. don't think about drinking and driving, but that doesn't mean that there is no big pop culture in the UK. It's, it's famous well, for that, right? People go out and drink. Introducing like seminars and whatnot in school as far as like when they're coming up in high school or getting ready to ride that in order to go into project ride you yeah. should take like a seminar to give you knowledge well, yeah, yeah. Well, documentary. we have that we have um uh, mr david Miners is the road safety officer at tcd and david runs project ride and he visits schools periodically um, we would really like um, to continue the um, campaign with a piece of the rock in schools and it's also been suggested by uh, a couple of different people to me that 
Well, what if before you get your bike license, you know how you have to do the theory on at the TCD computer. on the computer? You have to watch a piece of the rock as well. Mm. And maybe it could be edited and shortened a little bit for that purpose. Um, but just to make people aware of the dangers. Um, but it has to be education first and then enforcement. Yeah. Um, without the educational piece, without graduated licensing, without on-road training, they had a gentleman um, who has been riding a bike for 30 years in Bermuda, recently did the training with those, uh, with Antoine, mm -hmm. and... Um, His comment you know, to me was, I've been riding a bike for 35 years, and for 35 years I've been riding it wrong. <laughs> this guy is a, a senior in a major insurance company. Mm -hmm. He's a, totally risk adverse, you know. But I and I can take him back to doing the training. You know, this is some things like perfect example. You just mentioned, you know, you someone put it in front of you. You was afraid of hitting hard on the brakes. And you was afraid of locking up the back tire. You know what I mean? And I kind of laughed a little bit about it because that's something I hear so so much. It, it but but again, it, it's just. It's wrong. <laughs> so we should not be locking up the back tire. Mm. If anything, if anything, you might lock up the front if you were using the brakes properly. Um, this is one of the is the, the brakes. Look, I I just did my I just did my eight and I got my license, man. <laughs> hey, man, I you know what? Yeah, bro. Everybody else is in the same boat. I mean, that is the e easiest thing for me to try to improve people is how they use the brakes. Mm -hmm. You know, if if the same gentleman you know, who's for the up in the age, I'm not going to be too hard, but you know, he's not, you know, not a young guy, he's not up there trying to take a lot of risks. Yeah. Um, but when it came to doing a drill that I that designed um, to test emergency braking skills, you know, how quickly can you react and get on the brakes and the stopping distance that we started out with and then compared to where we ended up with was almost a magnitude of like two or three because because the person was never comfortable with the front brakes. He was coming from a school of thought that if you get on the front brakes too hard, you're going to flare up the handlebars. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I, never, yeah. I never thought that. <laughs> yeah, well, he's a little bit more old school, yeah, but he's taking it back to, the, you know, yeah. public, to, to pedal bikes, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You, he's too hard on the front, you're going to fly over okay, the yeah, yeah, or, yeah, or, or you're going to be even... Yeah. Yeah. But no, it's a very common misconception. But I, get but I, I know that... Um, why can't this come from out? The only jobs that I know that actually regulate Drinking and driving. No, not drinking and driving, but like how their employees drive is jobs that actually have service providers. Service providers. Like back when I was like back when I was working at Cablevision, they yeah. would tell us all the time, yeah. look when you're driving your truck, yeah. if you're speeding, if you're doing this, if you're doing this, mm -hmm. drive properly. Yes. Because you represent us. Yeah. Yeah. But that needs to be extended into the personal mm -hmm. world as well, because you know but I know the reason why it will be pushed back on like employers enforcing that is because a lot of people are going to see it as kind of like folks being impeded on their personal life. Well, a lot of people go, see I, it feel, I think that this, the random sobriety test would be a great rectifier to that. Absolutely. Because mm -hmm. it would basically come off as though, you know, you as a person are now riding your personal vehicle. You don't want to be beholden to yeah. your employer. Yeah. As far as how you ride your personal vehicle, because I know I know it sounds crazy, but that's yeah. how it's gonna come across. Yeah. But I feel like with the random sobriety test, you know, it's, or or people just being pulled over for for being uh, riding at a speed, yeah. you know, all the police officers have to do is take their names and the information and basically get court orders to make it mandatory for you to attend this se the seminar this mm -hmm. session and mm -hmm. to watch Peter the Rock and to have experts actually yeah. teach him about it. You know, I think the word as well. Well, there, there is something in place like that for um, uh, DUI offenders, uh, drunk under the influence. If you've been convicted, um, you there there is a um, a course yeah. here that is is professionally run, managed um, that you uh, can attend, and I think there it is, is optional. Some there, the, but I I could be wrong, but I think there is some kind of reward for doing that there is be it the you are usually if you're given a sentence for one year yeah uh to be off the road yeah. because you were caught the, uh, driving under the influence then if you attend that seminar and watch those videos and do those sessions for yeah. 10 hours or something like that then you you your sentence gets reduced by three months oh. 
Oh, but that's again that's a, that's presented as an option and as a reward. I, no, I don't think that I would say I would say it should be one year yeah. plus this. Yeah. It shouldn't be one year. But if you do this, then you get mm-hmm. three months off. You know, you know what I think would be a good idea as well. Um, because I I know that we have this. I I don't think that the license point system is smart, but it, whatever it's what we have. So I think it, what is it twelve points. And then your license yeah. gets taken away? Yeah. 12 points in a year. 12 points in a year. I think that rather than, I think, oh, on top of taking your license, I think that they should take your license for ever until you go to the program that you're trying to do with these students and have them retake that. I think mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. I think that mm-hmm. people would much, or e- or even if you get a big enough ticket, like if you get caught going a, a, over a certain speed or riding a certain way, I think that your license should, yeah, I think that either rather than paying fine, they should automatically have to do that because I'm telling you right now, I know majority of people would rather pay five hundred dollars mm-hmm. than have to go get go to a class when they think they already know how to ride. Right. Mm-hmm. right. That would also like, the points on the system. If if that can be linked with the insurance companies, and insurance companies can raise their premium for the next year. If you mm-hmm. you actually got ten mm-hmm. points, you never got off the road, but you got ten points. That yeah. means you're a bigger risk. If you if you're more if, if yeah yeah if you get more speed and ticket yeah I think I think you should pay more. And that happens in, in, in other, other some jurisdictions, companies yeah. and in other jurisdictions yeah. is is the norm. Yeah. So there there are many things that we can do, but we also have many laws on the books already um, that you know could could help. But we have some gaps. Um, in implementation and enforcement. In, yeah, and uh, yeah. you know for for the last. 12 months we've been working diligently to put together the documentation that's required to put forward to cabinet to change some of the legislation to or to to add additional legislation to get these measures implemented and uh, you know we we've seen it in other jurisdictions it's not like we're inventing something entirely new um, Antoine, when, when Antoine was in the UK for training, the trainer said, yeah, the UK was where Bermuda is 30 years ago. We have some catching up to do. And just, you know, big cultural change. But um, the, the work has been done. So now we have a new government. I'm really excited. Um, the, the previous minister was very supportive. The shadow minister... Um, um, Shadow Minister, for Transport, Minister Matt Lawrence Scott. Lawrence Scott was was former really Shadow. supportive. Former Shadow, yeah. Shadow um, former Shadow, former Shadow, yeah. and um, and many of, of the, the politicians on either side, you know, the willingness is there to do it. It's the implementation and the process, and we had a delay, but now we have a new team in place uh, who who really have an opportunity to make some. Quick wins in the first hundred days. Yeah. Really quickly, though, yeah. just so we can define, you know, the three pronged alliance we have here. Mm-hmm. As far as you know, we're a safety council, be motive, and you know, piece of rock. So, just really quick for the audience, you know, a few bars things. So, what can we expect from the Rural Safety Council in the future? What can we look forward to from the motive, and what's next for the piece of the rock? Mm-hmm. And we just go like that, like that. Okay. And you can wait. Go, go like what? <laughs> Well, so what, is, what, is, what, what is that? It's a CGI. CGI? We can't afford CGI. It's on the market. <laughs> that's why he has to say it. Sounds really silly. Though, it's it's fine. Fine. Yeah. I think it's I fine. just said what, we, what we'd like to see happen. Yeah, he did. The three things. Um, I, okay, two things. I'll first say um, what I would like to kind of put out there from B-Motor is that um, it's, it's well past time for us to um, recognize that the riding exam that we take at TCD to get on the road, riding on a couple of cones at 10 kilometers per hour, is nowhere near enough to give a parent confidence that their child should be out riding on the road. It's, it's not, because no parent is going to sit here and be able to tell anyone here that they feel that their child is, 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 is qualified through that. You know, It's very fortunate that some parents would take the initiative to then follow on through that and then you know go and follow the child for the first few hours and so on but understand that not every child gets an opportunity and so it is imperative for really any right, right minding right thinking person to say to themselves and to say to the MP that you know this 
this little Mickey Mouse riding around cones thing at TCD is not sufficient. We need to see on road examinations before people get out on the road. That should be from coming from the parents and from also from employers who are bringing people here to be on our roads. That's my <laughs> that's my thing right there. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And while these guys are helping with the enforcement, a piece of the rock wants to uh, bring it to social media, bring it on different platforms for education. Uh, we already we have been running our phase one of the campaign, which is and we are going to shift our gear and going to phase two. Phase one was trying to show the film at, at as many places as possible. But we still understand from our screenings that until we went to the schools, it was mostly the mothers that were coming to the screenings and not the age group that we were trying to target young people. So that's why we went to the schools. But we still, if a lot of people follow you guys, if they haven't seen the documentary, we will probably give you a link to share where so that people can watch the documentary. Mm -hmm. So that people can watch the documentary right. online and that will be great. And then phase two will be talking more about mm -hmm. the kind of things that Ali and Tuan, um, the Bermuda police, will be implementing so that we can make those educational pieces, put them out there and share a lot of stories. We still have like hundreds of hours of footage that was converted into a 70 minute film. So we still have a lot of other stuff to share with a lot of people. So we are going to continue. Please like our Facebook page, follow us on social media because in the future, if things don't get done, we want the public involvement to sign the petitions. Exactly. Right? We want to send out petitions. If a minister says, sorry, we are not going to in include random roadside sobriety testing, then we want people to come, come forward and help us push a case with the government mm. to get these things implemented. And also, BMOTO, they have a great website, bmotoacademy.com. Um, they have uh, an enrollment process online, you can, it's great. Yeah, and definitely so, if you have any questions, give me a call. Um, I am, or even use the chat on the uh, website because I'm always on it. Um, okay. Always readily yeah. available. So um, if there's any sort of questions around what BMOTO is offering or uh, anybody else that wanted to get involved, um, involved to help to help us to be able to increase our training capacity, mm -hmm. then we'd be happy to have that too. So We have approximately 500 16-year-olds going through Project Ride yeah. each year. That's a lot of work for one guy. <laughs> Imagine. Imagine. Well, we have six, it. We have six yes, people sir. a day, yeah. an average of six people a day, going to King Edward uh, Accident and Emergency for treatment following a road collision. Yeah, yeah. Well, we barely have enough bed to King Edward anyway. So. Six a day. Yeah. Imagine if they were going in, as Roddy said in the documentary, with the Zika virus or something like that. I mean, oh, yeah. people would be... I wish that evil was popping yeah. arms. And, right. and, yeah, and that's why I want the, uh, another thing about people coming onto the island and then, you know, not giving proper training, coming for the first time. And that thing, the cultural change thing, why we want to emphasize on that, uh, people awareness, is because first time I've seen people coming from UK, Canada, these jurisdictions where they would never even dream about drinking and driving. They come to Bermuda come and do it. within 15 yeah. days, yeah. max, they are yeah. converted. Yeah, Which, 15 days, we're having to get off the plane, man. <laughs> Don't give them that much. Right. Yeah. That's crazy. But yeah. what that speaks, no. it speaks volumes about our culture. Yeah. They see it happening all around them. They see people telling them that, okay, come on, you've just had four drinks, but one more drink and you'll still be fine. And and these kind of talks they actually they actually affect the psyche. They actually affect their psyche. There are there are so many people I know, experts who came here at the age of twenty five, never even having driven a bike. They come here, they get their license through the riding around the cones. They don't even have to go through the project ride proper one. They no. just literally turn up for the mm -hmm. they get their bike and then they're getting drunk as well. Yeah. It's trying to man, it's messing with our brains. Yeah. Time to change. Time to change. Time to change. Well, we appreciate you guys coming on the show. Thank you. And it, right. it's always nice to have a, you know, a triple alliance because we know all about allying, you know, <laughs> yin and yang coming together to defeat a common enemy. I don't you think know, that's so how yin and yang points. works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank and you. That, that's sure the links works. and make sure everyone can uh, look at your websites and make sure they can look at a piece of the rock so that we can get people to watch that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
<laughs> you shut the camera off. <laughs> I'm, I'm inside. Shut the camera off. I don't have mascara for the crying laughing.